My name is Chris, and today we're going to take a look at the long-awaited Humming Guru Record Cleaner. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! If you're unfamiliar with the Humming Guru, it was originally a Kickstarter campaign that was funded by 1,171 people, myself being the 1,111th, who raised just over $460,000 US to get it off the ground. It has made fairly bold claims about its cleaning ability, showing a relatively undefinitive and low resolution chalk test video, while garnering a great deal of attention for its relatively affordable price of about $380 before shipping, or the complete package that includes a 10 and 7 inch record adapter for about $430. But the big question, perhaps the only question is, does this machine do what it says for the money being asked? The thumbnail title of this video is not clickbait. I have genuine concerns as to whether or not this machine is in fact ultrasonic. That is to say, can it create microscopic exploding bubbles known as cavitation that get deep into the record grooves, making it the most efficient and best way with which to clean them? My main concern stems from the Humming Guru's power supply. True ultrasonic machines need a good deal of power to create cavitation in the water. My degrader and fairly cheap Harbor Freight Ultrasonics both come with IEC power cords that connect directly to the unit, feeding them the necessary current to do their respective jobs. The Humming Guru's IEC connection terminates into a power adapter, then plugs into the unit. Is this a big deal? Potentially. When you consider that the Harbor Freight unit uses 160 watts to produce its 60 kHz frequency, and the degrader uses 300 watts to produce 120 kHz frequency, it seems that the mere 60 watts of power used to make the 40 kHz frequency for the Humming Guru is a bit anemic. Now, the degrader has four transducers making waves, as it were, so 300 watts divvied up turns out to be 75 watts per transducer if you care to look at it that way, but using that math, the Humming Guru is only supplying 30 watts to each of its two transducers. I set off to do an old test we use in the tattoo community by taking a piece of aluminum foil taped down to a plastic frame and set in the machine, knowing that the power of cavitation will actually punch holes in the foil, but the results were inconclusive. You see, while the Harbor Freight is definitely more of an industrial style cleaner and did in fact put holes in the foil, the degrader, being designed specifically for the much more delicate task of record cleaning, did not put holes in the foil, and I do know that machine is ultrasonic. So, the results of the Humming Guru's foil test didn't prove much to me. So then I was on to simply cleaning a record and looking at the results. I started with a brand new Pantera record I had purchased recently, giving it a quick play on my turntable after using a D-stat to get rid of static and a quick brush on the table for dust. I wanted to see if I could hear a sonic difference after cleaning it in the Humming Guru like I'm able to do when cleaning new records in my degrader. The good news is, I could. It was definitely a subtle difference, but I could indeed hear a crisper top end and more dynamic bass after the record was cleaned. The bad news, however, was that the Humming Guru left a lot of stuff behind. There was certainly a fair amount of dust, and much of it seemed to be spread around more than before. There was even a bit of it clumped up in one particular area that I certainly wouldn't want to play in my turntable, so I avoided playing that area in my listening tests. Afterward, I ran the record through one cycle on my degrader to see how it would deal with the dirt the Humming Guru left behind. And, well, the results are pretty obvious. Yes, it's not really fair to compare a $400 machine to a $3,000 one, but it's what I had on hand, and I was curious to find out how well the degrader would outperform this less expensive upstart. As you've probably guessed, it wasn't even close. But that's not why we're really here, so I ran a different test to try and discern if the Humming Guru is indeed an ultrasonic. Being inspired by the chalk test that the Humming Guru themselves posted, I went for a similar approach. Taking a box of powdered carpet odor cleaner, I lightly sprinkled some on a test record before realizing that I was just going to press the powder firmly into the grooves to really test the machine anyway. I figured the carpet cleaner was dusty, fairly consistent in its particle size, and the white powder provided great contrast to the record for easy visibility. I blew off the excess and ran the machine on its 5 minute clean cycle and 10 minute dry cycle. These results were very different from the previous record I'd cleaned. Taking photos as close as possible using a USB microscope, I was quite surprised to see how well the Humming Guru removed the carpet cleaner. There were a couple of spots where a speck or two still remained, but this was a much improved result and certainly started to tell me more about the ultrasonic properties of the machine. It seemed like a good time to move on to the next test that could really help clear up any remaining doubt, the heat test. When ultrasonic machines run, the act of cavitation creates heat all on its own. This is why the degrader has a built-in safety feature that will automatically cool the water in the tank if it reads that the temperature is too high. For obvious reasons, this is crucial to a record cleaning machine, but if the Humming Guru was indeed ultrasonic, surely it would heat the water just as the degrader or Harbor Freight would just by simple use. 
I took a tank of distilled water sitting at room temperature, which is at my house currently about 67 degrees, and measured it with a thermometer. The before reading was 63 degrees, and I ran the machine five times in a row on its longest cleaning cycle without pause or drying time for a total of 25 minutes. The after reading was again encouraging with the water now being 82 degrees, a result that was certainly noteworthy, but could this simply be because of the working electronics housed within? One way to find out was to run the test again, but for a longer time to see what happens. I let the machine cool down completely while I got caught up on a few episodes of Heels on the Stars channel and measured the water once again. 63 degrees, the same as before. Now, while watching the mighty Michigan Wolverines stomp the Ohio State Buckeyes, I ran the machine 10 times in a row listening to its increasingly painful squeal before taking the end result. 105 degrees. This was an excellent sign for the case of this being a true ultrasonic machine. But if that's the case, what's the deal with the mixed cleaning results? Well, from what I'm able to gather, while this machine is indeed almost certainly an ultrasonic, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it is woefully underpowered. Organic material like tiny hair, dust, and dirt don't seem to fare all that well in this machine, while the smaller, granular particulates do. To test this theory, I took the unsightly dust, dirt, and hair from my vacuum and laid it on with the same pressure as before, although I got a little more carried away with how much was applied overall. I then gave the record a wash and dry cycle to check the results. As you can see, the Hummingiru didn't do too bad under the microscope, but once again, the dirt seemed to be spread more evenly throughout the entire record. So I gave the record another two washes in the machine and one final dry to see if that would help any. In fact, it did. There was less dirt overall on the record, but it was still spread about. This was just as evident when I looked closely at the record, as some places were completely free of debris, while others still had evidence of dirt. Hair was a particular problem of note. While I do dust and vacuum on a regular basis, there's simply no avoiding pet hair in some fashion, as my cat sheds like any other. While multiple cleanings would certainly seem to be the way to go, I would advise caution here. As the results show, running the machine multiple times without a break in between can cause higher temperatures than you might want when exposing your records. This is why the degrader has a built-in safety. The Humming Guru has no such feature, so it'll be up to you to monitor the water temperature when washing one record multiple times. Washing multiple records isn't as much of an issue as you'll have the 10 minute drying time to cool off the machine between runs. And believe me, unless you live in the arid desert, you'll need the 10 minute dry cycle to even get close to a dry record. On multiple occasions, I needed to either hand dry the remaining moisture or simply dry the record in my degrader to quickly handle the task. Before we talk about my final thoughts concerning the Humming Guru though, let's take a look at how it works. As many of my patrons saw in an unboxing video I made just for Patreon, the Hungry Guru comes with extra filters, extra rollers, this multi-tool, and in my case, the seven and 10 inch record adapters. It also comes with a quick start guide on how to use the record adapters, which can take a bit of getting used to. You'll wanna take care to make sure that each rubber foot is secure on the record and the adapter before placing it in the machine, and it can be a bit tricky in the beginning to get the record aligned correctly. It also has a set of very clear, very high quality instructions that impressed me quite a bit. It seems in the modern era of hi-fi accessories and products that included instructions are often severely lacking if they even come with a product at all. Not only were these made quite well, they were single language instructions, which indicates to me that they spent time and money making different manuals for the different regions of sale. Here you can read clearly that the center button is your start and pause button, the dry button at the top runs only that feature, the clean button on the left runs only the cleaning cycle, while the auto button on the right will run the cleaning cycle and then the drying cycle with the time you have selected. To change the dry time, use the selector on the side of the unit. The single mark is for a five minute clean and the double mark is for 10. Your power button is located alongside, as is the adapter port. To clean a record, fill the included water tank to the appropriate level, which can be very tricky to see, so check twice and pour it into the top of the machine. The lid is meant to be on when pouring the water in, as it filters the water when it comes out. Place the water tank back in the bottom of the machine and select your cleaning program. Press once for a two minute clean on either the clean or auto buttons, or twice for the five minute clean. You press the center button and you're on your way. A couple of things to note. The top holes in the water tank seem like they'd be for gripping the lid to remove it, but adult fingers certainly won't fit in there, so you'll need to grab the lid by the sides. Also, the only way to remove the water from the tank, sans tipping the machine upside down, which I don't recommend, is to start the drying cycle. This triggers the draining cycle, allowing you to remove and change your water when necessary. If you weren't already aware, only use distilled water in the machine, as tap water will calcify over time and cause problems not only to the machine, but to your records. You may think the next caution may go without saying, but it happened to me, so make sure you have water in the top before you start the cleaning cycle. 
My degrader does this automatically, and I'm so used to that being the case that when I was running multiple cycle tests while being distracted by the football game, I got halfway through a clean cycle before I realized the noise was different and there was no water inside. While there is a safety feature on the Humming Guru that won't allow you to run it without the lower tank in place, including simply running a dry cycle, there is no safety guard, feature, or alert that prevents you from running the machine without water in the upper tank. I feel that this is a huge oversight, and this can certainly ruin your machine, so double check. The multi-function tool is removing one of the three filters in the machine, although the most questionable, the tank filter. When observed up close, it seems obvious to me that this filter would only grab the largest of dirt and debris, so I'm confused as to its use. Not only could this same debris just be released into the water tank below, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be putting records in with such large particles through a bath. It can also determine the depth of water in the upper tank, and is used for removing the replaceable rollers on the side. This is another clever feature implemented in my opinion, as rollers can certainly wear out. You won't have to worry about sending your cleaner back to service, as you can handle this yourself. A question I've heard asked multiple times about ultrasonic cleaners is, are they loud? While loud can be a fairly interpretive description, I happen to have a decibel meter on hand that my buddy Brian loaned me some years back and must have forgotten about. Taking the meter and placing it 5 inches away from each machine, I measured the noise levels during cleaning, draining, and drying cycles. The Humming Guru came in at about 57 to 59 decibels when the cleaning cycle was running, and went up a surprising amount to 74 and 75 when draining. The dry cycle was very quiet in my opinion, holding steady at 63 decibels, but this wasn't surprising to me as the dryer on the machine didn't perform at a standard I'd prefer. The degrader wasn't too far off the Humming Guru in most cases. Its much more powerful transducers put out a mere 65 decibel level during cleaning and didn't go up much when draining, reading out at 68 dB or so. The drying cycle, however, was another story. With multiple fan power settings, I tend to set mine at just over halfway to shorten the drying time. I'm currently putting up with an 80 decibel noise level, which doesn't bother me too much as I'm not usually in the room, but only for about two and a half minutes. So with all this said, what are my overall thoughts on the Humming Guru? Well, there are certainly several caveats with this machine that made it a bit fussier than I'd like in its operation. The irritating sound that came and went but has seemingly stayed away in the cleaning cycle, and the dreadfully long drying time that never once fully dried a record I placed in the machine were a bit frustrating. The lack of a safety feature to protect the delicate transducers in the machine bothered me as well. Most of all though, was the need to clean a record several times to get it to what I would think most people would call an acceptable level. So is this cleaner useless then? Not necessarily. If you use a little forethought and don't mind a little bit of extra work, I think it may be a viable option for people who are on a budget but still want an ultrasonic cleaner. Taking a goat's hair or nylon hair makeup brush and giving your record a bit of a pre-scrub with distilled water, and even a surfactant if you have one, can eliminate much of the larger hair and debris the machine just can't seem to clean. From there you can wash the record a couple of times, and if the dryer doesn't do its job the way you'd like, you can always purchase a good microfiber towel from places like Analog Restorations to mop up the rest. With these things in mind, it's really up to you to determine if you like what you're seeing in the results of this video, and if you're willing to put in a little extra effort for a better clean. I'd be quite interested in hearing what you think about the Humming Guru. Thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you for stopping by to watch, and I look forward to next time.